We use the round brush with the John Pike end for scraping. We began our lesson with the study of the dominant dark values first. Then we moved on to our dominant light values. For this panel, what I intend to demonstrate is the effects that we might get uh, working with some of this already dry and some moistened again. And I'll possibly come back into these areas and add a little more water, demonstrating that you can always add more water to your water cup. So I'll start out with my warm color, again mixing our yellow first, then our red to make our orange, and that's going to warm our sepia. And start at the top, and remember that this is going to be a dominant middle tone. Then add blue to our sepia, and that will cool our color. Add a little more blue, and we get our water, our splash, paint around our splash. Leave some white for surf, and place our cool into the mountain in the background. Then we'll come back to our warm, starting with our yellow, mix into our sepia, then our red into our sepia and use that mixed with the background for the beach area. In this case, I'll paint the entire beach area, then come back for wet sand. And just as I did in the other panels, incidentally, I moved the panels down so that the video camera doesn't have to be readjusted. Hopefully, you've noticed that. I'm adding water. There is pigment in my brush. So the more water I add, the lighter it becomes. And we don't have to worry about brush strokes at this point. And then just to be a little bit different from all the others, I'll leave this area to dry and paint into dry areas. Just showing the possibilities of working wet into wet and dry washes, lifting out a little bit of white for my wave action there. Then I can paint my rocks with our neutral color, and since this is middle gray or middle tones, I can apply that very dark and add a little more water to it, changing the values just a little bit. And to lighten one side of our rock, 
we can just take a damp brush, squeeze the water out of your brush, and lift color out. The other way of making it lighter on this side of the rock is to scrape on it. But remember, when scraping, you want your wash to set up just for a few seconds, then you can begin scraping. If you scrape too soon, the areas that you scrape will fill in with dark color. So if that happens, hold off a little bit and then scrape. And that causes this part of the rock to become a little bit lighter and we can scrape out the tops of the rocks to make them a little bit lighter. And what you want to do when you're scraping is have a dominant scrape, a subordinate scrape, and an incidental scrape. Now if you add another element, the fourth element, make sure that it's different from the other two or the other three. So you can you can violate your own rules with four if you know that you're abiding by one part of the rule with dominant, subordinate, and incidental. The fourth one has to be smaller or larger than the other three. Now some of this has granulated, which is a wonderful effect with working with sepia. Often the colors will granulate and uh, granulate throughout the painting. What I want to do is just place a glaze on top of the background so that I don't have to come back to that later. So I'll put the mountain in the background and I'll soften the bottom edge of that mountain because what happens out at the ocean the spray kicks up and softens the bottom parts of our hills. Then with a little more sepia and a little more dark I can delineate the hill in the background. And I want my edge rough as possible, indicating tree lines and different things that, that you'll see along the edge. And notice that I'm just painting the top edge. Now I'll paint the bottom with just some soft water, making this all a very soft edge. And then as we come closer to the land mass, where the land mass meets the beach, we want very soft. As I mentioned, the spray comes along and diffuses everything in the background. While this is setting up, I can add a little more color into this area and in the process use some dry brush on our surf action as it comes in with the side of a flat brush. I've changed brushes. Now I'm using the flat brush. I can place some rough edges to our washes, delineating the edge of the splashing wave and soften those edges so that they become part of what we've already painted. While this is setting up, I can also come over here with our dark sand, wet sand, can come right in through here, come right across the texturizing the front of this beach. And while that's still wet, I can put the reflection of our wave down into this part of the beach. Simply adding water, scrubbing it just a little bit, I can go into that area and with the clean part of our paper napkin we can lift out a little reflection in the dark wet sand. The dark wet sand needs a soft edge as it meets 
the dry sand very soft along that edge. Just take clean water and wet those areas. And then with the clean part of your Kleenex, take out the bead that might form along those edges. Now we'll continue with this in another lesson and show you how to finish and begin finishing parts of this even more. Register for the Juan Peña free watercolor painting classes by sending us your email. Indicate register me in the subject line. You will receive the class syllabus and a link to the YouTube lesson. Your email will be confidential and will not be shared with anyone. Send your email to peña.freeartclasses at gmail.com. Thank you.